Hello viewers, welcome to this video. This is the final video in this series, I mean in this topic. In the previous video, we set up a highly available HCD cluster with three nodes with TLS encryption and this time we are going to provision a Kubernetes cluster using kubeadm command and we're going to configure the cluster to use an external HCD cluster instead of kubeadm provisioning its own HCD pod, we are going to use this external HCD cluster. So I still have the same HCD cluster left from the previous video so VirtualBox we've got three VMs hcd1 2 and 3 and I can run hcd ctl command and the cluster is healthy with three hcd nodes so if I go to my kubernetes github repository into kubeadm external hcd I've added this third documentation for this video let's go into this documentation and for this video I'm going to deploy one master node and one worker node and I've also got a vagrant environment for this particular setup so k infra if you go in there you've got the vagrant file so basically you will have one master one worker node if you want multiple just change the node count uh, depending on the number of worker nodes you want and it's again based on Ubuntu 2004 we will have a private network with the IP address 172.16.16.100 for the k master and 101 for the worker node going back to the documentation we have the same cd cluster already running from our previous video and we have this master and worker which i'm going to do a vagrant up to bring these two virtual machines and then from there we can just follow this documentation to set up the cluster to use an external hcd cluster all right so let me go to my kubernetes repository that i checked out yesterday kubernetes kubeadm external hcd k is infra and there we have our vagrant file let's do vagrant up let me bring up these two virtual machines it's gonna take a couple of minutes i'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done all right the two virtual machines are up and now let's proceed to copying the certificate so if you remember when we set up the hcd cluster we created the key pair and the certificate authority so how we copied the certificate key pair along with the certificate CS certificate to each of these HCD nodes, we are going to copy the same set of files, the certificate and key pair along with the CS certificate to the K master, the master machine as well. Okay, so for that, I'm going to go into the directory where I've got my certificates. So I have these certificates. I just need to copy these three files. That's the CA certificate and the certificate and keypad that we are going to use. And let's copy this command here. Depending on the IP address of your master node, just update the, uh, the IP address here. Okay, let's copy that, paste it here and the password is cube admin the certificates have been copied and now what i'm going to do is basically run these steps on both the k master and k worker like disabling firewall disabling swap kernel settings installing docker and adding kubernetes app repository and so on so i'm going to bring up my tmax and i'm going to split into two panes and log into each of them ssh root at 172.16.16.100 the password is cube admin and in the bottom pane ssh root at 172.16.16.101 cube admin okay let me synchronize the pane all right so the first thing is disabling the firewall that's done and now turning off the swap that's done and the kernel parameters that's done and installing the docker engine so this one is going to take a couple minutes i'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done okay so docker is installed we shouldn't need to start the docker service manually because this is ubuntu so the docker service gets enabled and started automatically let's verify system ctl status docker yep docker service is running fine all right so now we're going to add the kubernetes repository and we are going to install the kubernetes components so kubeadm kubelet and the kubectl so i'm using version 1.19.2 again this is going to take a minute or two i'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done okay so kubernetes components install i'm going to turn off the tmux pane synchronization and i'm going to run the following commands on kmaster right so what we're doing here is we are creating a directory under etc kubernetes and we're going to move the certificates that we copied to this particular directory so let me copy that 
and if I do ls on the master node, so those are the certificates that we copied from the host machine, and let's move it to the etc Kubernetes PKI etc etcd directory. Okay, and now we are creating a cluster configuration. Okay, so this one is important. So this is kind of different to what we've been doing before. So let me go back to my Kubernetes top level and go into one of the documentation. Let's say the Ubuntu 20 installation documentation. And if you look in here, the cube ADM command that we use to initialize the cluster, we use to pass a couple of arguments, right? So one is the API server advertise address. So if you've got multiple interfaces, you just need to specify which interface you want Kubernetes to use for the Kubernetes traffic and the pod sitter network because I'm using Calico down here I want my pod sitter network to be in this range the slash 16 range so that's the default that's used by Calico and I'm passing these two arguments uh, to the kubeadium init command because I'm going to use an external etcd cluster I need to create a configuration file to tell Kubernetes that I'm going to be using an external etcd cluster okay let's go back to our documentation kubeadium external etcd and this documentation here okay so this is the configuration that we we're going to need and let me copy that and in kmaster I'm going to paste that Okay, so basically what we are saying is we are specifying the list of IP address of the etcd nodes that we created earlier. And if you are using your own virtual machines or physical servers, make sure to replace these IP addresses. And we are specifying the etcd endpoints as those three etcd nodes. And we are using the HTTPS protocol along with the certificates that we copied into this directory, etc Kubernetes PKI etcd. So if you notice here, because we can't mix arguments with the configuration file, you could either use configuration file while doing the kubeadium init command. So if you see here, kubeadium init, and we are passing minus minus config argument and we are passing this file this yaml file so you can't mix the configuration file along with the arguments so that's why i've included the arguments that we used to use with kubeadium init command like api server advertise address and the pod uh, network sitter so you can't mix the configuration and the arguments so it has to be either in the configuration or in the arguments unfortunately the etcd endpoints this etcd uh, related stuff we can't use it by our Argument. So it has to be in a configuration file. So that's why I've included the other two arguments we used to use in the same configuration file. Okay, so we've created that. Let me verify. Yep, we have the kubeadium config file. Now we can use the kubeadium init command with that configuration file to initialize our cluster. And this is going to take, it's not going to take more than a minute, so I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done. All right, the command completed and Kubernetes cluster has been initialized. And if you look in this uh, output, you can see during the certification creation phase, you can see that it has skipped creating certificates for HCD because it has detected from our configuration file that our intention is to use an external HCD. So it has detected external HCD mode and it has skipped creating the certificate. So that's good. And later we can verify by logging into our HCD cluster and do some get request to see what key value pass that it has loaded in our HCD cluster. Now we are going to initialize our K worker. Not initialize, we are going to join K worker to this cluster. And the command is given here kubeadium join, and I'm just going to copy that and run it on the K worker. So on kworker, it's not going to take a lot of time. It just takes a few seconds to join it. And while it's doing that, let's also go in and copy the command that we need to deploy overlay network. So I'm using Calico as the overlay network. Okay, so that's done. And back in the master node, I'm pasting this command to deploy Calico. Okay, so Calico overlay network has been deployed. I'm going to exit out of everything. And back in my host machine, I'm going to make a directory under my home directory called .q. And I'm going to copy root at 172.16.16.100 which is my kmaster and the file i'm going to copy is etc kubernetes admin.conf i'm going to copy that to dot cube as config and the password is cube admin and i've already got kubectl binary on my host machine kubectl and i can do kubectl cluster info there we go our cluster is running so that's the ip address of kmaster and i can do kubectl 
get notes okay so it's ready k monster is not ready but it will be ready soon the thing to check here is so we've got our kubernetes cluster running fine and now we need to verify let's take a look at our hcd cluster and see if it has got if it has created any key value pairs so let me uh, i think i should have that in my history yeah so we have the member list and let's do uh, a different command get slash get everything under the root minus minus prefix minus minus keys only okay cool so you can see here and all these are key value pairs that our kubernetes cluster has created in this hcd cluster so definitely this external hcd cluster has been used by our kubernetes cluster okay let's check the status all right, so now you can see our K master is up and running. So give this a try. If you've got any questions, let me know and I'll be happy to help. I'll see you all in my next video. Until then, keep learning and keep on learning. Bye-bye.